Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Coffee with Shane. I uh, am excited to have you here. It's It's been one of those weird mornings, um, <clears throat> and I'll, I'll just share it with you. Uh, I actually tried to get this thing started a couple of times and had all kinds of goofy problems. So uh, who knows? Hopefully, hopefully this comes through. Hey, I want to jump into Romans chapter 7. After Sunday's sermon, I was encouraging us to think about uh, what Romans chapter 7 says to us about this struggle, this battle in our hearts for sin and uh, between the flesh and between the Spirit of God and <clears throat> how incredibly uh, discouraging it can be for me at times. I, I can get very frustrated with my own heart, with my own attitude, with, with the reality of what sin is and how often I struggle with it. And so I just want to encourage you to, to grab your Bibles and, and open them up with me. I'm hoping that as you see this in the text today, you will be very encouraged. And, and you, like me, uh, will find this to be a, a, a time of hope and, and a time of, of great joy as we trust God and, and we lean into who he is um, in, by faith in, in what his text tells us and, and it, the, the encouragement that we have in that. So let's jump in. We're going to read a little bit longer passage this morning. So grab your Bibles, Romans chapter 7, starting in verse 7. The text says this, What then shall we say? That the law is sin? By no means. Yet if it had not been for the law, I would not have known sin. For I would not have known what it is to covet, if the law had not said, you shall not covet. <clears throat> but sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, produced in me all kinds of covetousness. For apart from the law, sin lies dead. I was once alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin came alive and I died. The very commandment that promised life proved to be death to me. For sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, deceived me and through it killed me. So the law is holy, and the commandment is holy and righteous and good. Did that which is good then bring death to me? By no means. It was sin producing death in me through what is good, in order that sin might be shown to be sin, and through the commandment might become sinful beyond measure. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold under sin. For I do not understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law, that it is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being. But I see in my members another law, waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am. Who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. I want to read chapter 8, verse 1 and 2 uh, here in just a minute, but let's just rest, let's just think about this for a minute. Paul describes this battle, this, this ongoing war that's being waged between his flesh and, and the spirit in his, in his life, and that he recognizes that as he sees sin through the law, as, as the, the, the precepts and commandments of God come down, we see sin exposed. In fact, later on, I believe it's in, later in, in chapter 8, he actually describes the fact that that those who don't have the law, who aren't of Christ, who don't have the Holy Spirit, they can't do anything else. They're deceived and they're, they're not, it it's just doesn't make any sense. They wouldn't be able to see sin as sin. They would do it without any conviction because they don't have the Holy Spirit. And so you and I have that conviction of the Holy Spirit. We have the presence of the, of the Word of God in our lives and, and here that we can read. And so we see the conflict. We actually experience the pain of that reality of sin, the, the members of our flesh, the body that we have, this fleshly, sinful body that is waging war against the Spirit and, and the conflict that happens. And I personally get discouraged at times. I personally find myself really struggling and even at times becoming um, not depressed, but but just uh, 
almost feeling helpless. That what's the point if if I'm if I'm working hard at this, if I'm struggling against this flesh, if I'm engaged in this war and it just keeps happening, what's the point? Well, I think Paul gives us a clue to what the point is. It, catch the end of that passage. Yes, it, it, we, we acknowledge that there is this battle, there is this war going on, there is this conflict that's happening. But look at what Paul says in chapter 7, verse 24. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body? And he gives thanks to God. He says, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The point is, is it's through Christ that we have been redeemed. We've been delivered from this body. God's provision of Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection on the cross provides for you and me the means of escape, of freedom from being slaves to this fleshly sinful body. And, and it sets it, he sets it right in that process. And we know that in Ephesians, we see it in Ephesians chapter two, that he sees us seated next to Christ, that that's our eternal final destination. God sees us that way now, and Christ intercedes for us in this, in that moment and in that time. In fact, look at what Romans 8, 1 says. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin he condemned sin in the flesh. Christ in his death, in his life, in his resurrection, he has conquered death and he did what the law could not do and that is that he conquered that flesh. He, can, he, he actually put it to death and, and, and he has provided for you and me a new life in Christ through the Holy Spirit, uh, through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, for us to live these free lives and to, to put our minds on the spiritual things and not be focused on the flesh. And so, yes, there is this discouragement. Yes, there is this, this conflict that you and I will still experience and this battle that's going on. But you can even be, hopefully this is more encouraging to you, if you jump over to Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14 says this, for by a single offering, he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. And if you read the, the whole of the text, you'll see that they're talking about Christ, whose death, who, who, whose sacrifice, this one sacrifice, has perfected for all time. Do you see that word? It's actually used in the past tense. We're perfected. Christ's death, his, his death, burial, and resurrection, and, and our acknowledgement or our, our receiving of that gift. It, and I, I know there's, there's a discussion, you know, do we receive it? Is it not? Yes, it, it's, I believe it's all of those things, but um, we, we do know that there's this, there's this um, confession with your mouth and believe in your heart. There, there's this combination of things that's happening. God is calling us. He's, he's predestined us. He, that is all true. And yet he's also waiting on us to respond to that and to believe it. And so I, I believe that those things all happen together. Um, and so when that happens, when we're his children, when we're called by his name and we receive that calling and we receive that gift, we are perfected for all time while being sanctified. So there's this process that's happening. You and I as children of God are, are presently perfected in God's kingdom and he sees us that way. That's, he actually calls us his sons, adopted sons, predestined for holiness. We see that in Ephesians chapter one. It's this beautiful picture, but we're still in the process of being set apart, made holy, sanctified. And so while we're in this engagement, while we're in this battle, we need to get our eyes on who Jesus is and thank God for the gift of Christ and let that be the hope that, that holds us up and sustains us in the middle of all the conflict, in the middle of all the challenges and all of the battles that we may face. I want to remind you to ask the questions. We're going to continue to work through these questions. What does this teach me about God? What does it teach me about me? What does this teach me about loving God? What does this teach me about loving others? And finally, so what? How do I apply this to my life? How do I use this information in this text, who God is, who others are, and how we're to relate to them? How do we use this to glorify God more today? My hope is that you are encouraged by this this morning. And if you are, are discouraged and really frustrated and, and struggling in your sin, I want to challenge you to go to your knees this morning in prayer and begin to thank God for his son Jesus and what he did on the cross and the, pay, the price that he paid for you and for me, the suffering he went through, the wrath of God that he took for our sins and start to extol and praise what he has done and get your eyes back on the glory of that reality. 
the glory of that truth. And if you need more encouragement, go and read Ephesians chapter 1, 2, and 3. Go and see who you are in Christ and be reminded of that glorious truth. Yes, we are in a battle. Yes, we are experiencing spiritual warfare. Yes, there will be suffering on this earth for the children of God. Those things are all true. And yes, we will be discouraged at times because we'll see the brokenness of our heart. We'll see the realities of our sin. But God, through Christ, has paid for those things. And you and I can be hopeful in that. And we can have joy in that. And we can live thankful and victorious lives by putting our eyes back on Christ and keeping our, our, our mind focused on what he's done on the cross. Confess that sin when you see it in your life. Confess that bad attitude. Confess those things that we choose to do at times that, that are not of God. Confess that sin. Get it out. 1 John 1, 9, get it out. Confess it and be done with it. Yes, all of those things are true. But you and I have been called, you and I have been grafted in, you and I have been adopted as children to the, to the King of kings and the Lord of lords through the, through the work of Christ on the cross, through his blood, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. What a glorious hope we have. And we can live that way today. I want to encourage you to consider that and, and to, to be thanking God this week as you wrestle with your own sin and you wrestle with the world and, and the life and the, the place that God has you. May God bless you in your time this week as you worship him every day in everything that you do, giving praise and glory to God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. God bless you guys. Have a great day.